Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hey folks, I'm Dr. Patrick Gilbride from Emergency Medicine Cases, and this is part one of a rapid review of podcast episode 91 on occult knee injuries. In this episode, we're going to review the differential diagnosis of occult knee injuries so you can start to develop that list of can't-miss injuries for your next shift in the ED. And then we're going to move on and we're going to cover a few historical clues and physical exam pearls that you can incorporate into your practice to optimize your assessment of these patients. In the second part of this episode, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the key occult knee injury diagnoses that we've got to make before these patients leave the emergency department. And then we're going to touch on when we should and should not be using knee immobilizers in the knee injured patient. All right, so let's get into this and talk about the differential of occult knee injuries. So for the most part, when a patient presents to the ED with a complaint of acute knee pain, we don't always do a great job at assessing these patients. These patients are often sitting in a waiting room and we just kind of stroll up to them clipboard in hand, we introduce ourselves, we pull up the pant leg on the effective side and really we just quickly look to see is the knee swollen, is it red, and then we palpate along the proximal tibia to see if there's any pain. Next thing we do, we just hand the patient an x-ray rec and we send them off for some imaging. The patient returns from the x-ray department and this is essentially what you're presented with. You know, you look at the x-ray and it's essentially just a normal knee x-ray. And unfortunately for some clinicians, their differential doesn't dive much further than, you know, is a fracture present on the x-ray or is this just the catch-all label of soft tissue injury? Now, if we take that approach, we're going to miss out on some critical can't-miss occult knee injuries that can present with a normal knee x-ray. And if missed, could lead to significant lifelong disability and even possible limb amputation for these patients. Now, what do we need to think about? What are the diagnoses that present with a normal knee x-ray that we need to make before this patient leaves our department? At this point, it's probably beneficial to try to use a forced cognitive strategy and run through the list of seven key occult knee injuries. And we really got to take a couple seconds to consider the potential for each one of these in the patient that's sitting in front of us. If we don't consider any of these diagnoses, we're never going to be able to make them. So what are these can't-miss, time-sensitive diagnoses that we've got to make in these individuals with a normal or near-normal knee x-ray? Number one, a spontaneously reduced knee dislocation, a quadriceps or patella tendon rupture, a lateral tibial plateau fracture. Is there a possible chance that this is a locked knee secondary to a buckle handle tear of the meniscus? Could this be a hip injury with referred pain, which is something we really want to pay particular attention to in the pediatric population who may be presenting with, you know, leg calf perthes or a slipped capital femoral epiphysis? Do they have a tight compartment and this could be a compartment syndrome? And then lastly, could this just be an early presentation of a septic knee? We want to force ourselves to think of all of these possible diagnoses in that individual who comes in with knee pain and a normal knee x-ray. Okay, so now that we've established those seven can't-miss diagnoses to consider, let's move on to a few key pieces of information you can obtain on history that will help you narrow down your differential diagnosis for a patient with an acute knee injury. The first thing to do is to really try hard to establish from the patient what was the actual mechanism of injury which resulted in their knee injury today. Were they involved in a motor vehicle collision and had a dashboard driven into their knee? I mean, if they were, then we want to push things like a possible patella fracture, knee dislocation, or a tibia fracture higher up on our differentials. Were they at the gym or playing some type of sport that had a valgus strain placed on their knee? If so, then we want to consider things like an MCL tear or even a lateral tibial plateau fracture. Does the patient describe a history of running with, you know, a sudden deceleration injury and now they're describing some sudden buckling of the knee that would be consistent with an ACL tear? Or lastly, do they describe that they were, you know, turning really quickly and had a twisting motion to the knee that would be consistent with a meniscal type injury? In addition to mechanism, another key feature to consider when evaluating these patients with knee pain is the actual age of the patient. For example, the injury that occurs as a result of a valgus force is very different for a child than it is for an adult or, say, an elderly individual. We'd expect this force to cause an MCL injury in the majority of adults, but in the extremes of age, the injury pattern that they get is going to be quite different. With kids, we hear time and time again that in the pediatric population, ligaments are a lot stronger than bones, and this really does hold true in the knee injuries, as we're more likely to see this type of mechanism cause a you know, distal femur fracture in these little folks. And in the elderly population with their osteopenic bones, we're more likely to expect a lateral tibial plateau fracture secondary to the femur coming down on top of the, uh, the tibia, kind of like a hammer. All right, now let's move on to some physical exam pearls. It's funny, but the physical exam in the knee injured patient really makes some clinicians a little bit uncomfortable. Now, that's not because this, you know, the exam is overly difficult, 
But, you know, patients appear to be in a lot of pain, and we're pretty hesitant to manipulate them very much because we don't want to cause them any more pain. It really doesn't have to be that way, though. We don't have to equate the physical exam to pain in the knee-injured patients. There's a couple very simple things that we can do to make our patients a little bit more comfortable, and in doing so, it's going to make us feel a bit more comfortable when we're examining these guys. We don't want to shortchange our exam and really end up missing something that could be crucial in making one of those you know, key critical diagnoses that we've got to make um, in these individuals before they leave the emergency department. You know, first off, we can pre-medicate these patients so they're more comfortable. And secondly, we can ensure that they're properly positioned so that we can optimize our exam. Have the patient lie supine, get good exposure of both knees so you have something to compare to, and then place a pillow behind the patient's distal femur so it puts their knees into about you know, 20 degrees of flexion. It's actually pretty impressive how something as simple as putting that pillow under the patient's knee will improve their apprehension of your physical exam, and therefore it's also going to set you at ease a little bit. By putting that pillow there and getting the knee already into flexion, you're already set up to perform your Lachman test. And this is going to minimize the amount that you've actually got to manipulate that patient's knee. Secondly, putting them into this position is going to open up the joint line so you can more accurately assess it and determine whether or not there's actually any focal tenderness. Another quick exam tip is to have the patient perform a straight leg raise in order to assess their extensor mechanism function. If a patient is able to straight leg raise, then the possibility of a quadriceps or patella tendon rupture is significantly reduced. And then lastly, in any patient who reports you know, a valgus mechanism of injury or medial joint line tenderness, you want to make sure that you examine that lateral joint line because if it's tender there, you want to significantly increase your suspicions for a lateral tibial plateau fracture. And therefore, if your x-rays are negative, you may want to consider going on further and getting some oblique views on x-ray or potentially even getting a CT scan. Well, that's part one of a rapid review of occult knee injury pearls and pitfalls. The key take home points from this part of the episode is to use a forced cognitive strategy to ensure you're considering all seven of those can't-miss occult knee injuries that you need to make in the ED before this patient leaves. Secondly, you want to consider the mechanism of injury and the patient's age. And lastly, don't shortchange your physical exam because you could end up missing something more critical. You know, put a pillow under the patient's knee to make them more comfortable and get all knee injuries to straight leg raise and make sure you palpate both the medial and lateral joint lines. In part two, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the can't-miss diagnoses that we talked about that can present with a normal knee x-ray. Well, that's all for now. For references and a written summary on occult knee injuries, Go to the Emergency Medicine Cases Summary for Episode 91 at emergencymedicinecases.com.